This is Richard Wolf from Democracy at Work responding to another Ask Prof. Wolf question from our Patreon community. This question comes from Stephen. And Stephen asks, apropos of the shortage of oil and gas in Europe uh, these last few months, what about a socialist society? How would it go about distributing things as crucial, as urgent, as basic as oil and gas, energy in short, when it's in short supply? When suddenly, as has happened uh, because of the sanctions applied by the Europeans to Russia and then Russia's counter sanctions back, that's what affected the flow of oil. By the way, not the invasion of uh, Ukraine. That war could have gone on, could be going on without it affecting the oil business in a material way, uh, certainly not in the way it's been doing. It's the sanctions, not the war, that creates the problem. What is an alternative way of distributing a problem, a shortage? Well, one way, the main way in our world, is the market. And that's exactly what's been going on. Because there's a sudden shortage, because of what they politely call geopolitical interference, that's the sanctions and counter sanctions, with a short supply of oil and gas, suddenly anyone who wants oil and gas has to bid against everybody else who wants oil and gas to get the scarce available supplies. So the price is bid up by competing demanders, competing buyers of that oil and gas. And therefore, in many European countries, uh, I believe Steve is writing about Germany, uh, prices of oil or gas or both of them have doubled, tripled or more in a very short time. What would be a socialist alternative? Well, the answer the socialists have always given is that the market is a very crude and very blunt instrument with many, many defects and flaws. It's a whole presentation that I sometimes make to give people a sense of what's wrong with markets. Let me summarize here the big ones. A market takes whatever is scarce and gives it to the richest person, the one in the room who offers the most money, who gets the scarce everything, whether it's an ice cream cone, oil or gas, or anything else. In other words, it's a way of deciding who gets whatever is scarce because the people who want it, the demand, is greater than the available quantity for sale, the supply. All right, the first problem with that is it's a distribution mechanism that favors the rich because they can afford to pay whatever it is it takes to get some. The best example is when milk would be short and you would see a rich person coming in offering $20 a quart for milk and getting it and feeding it to his pet cat, whereas a family with five children that need to grow up and have strong bones can't afford even $2 a quart, so they go without milk. This is a way of distributing that is fundamentally unjust. Well, then the answer comes from the conventional thinking, yeah, but when the price is very high, it'll make other people want to enter the market. Well, number one, the people who we're talking about, the people who run these businesses, they understand supply and demand too. They always manipulate the market. They manipulate the supply by holding it back. They manipulate the demand by what we call advertising, pushing people in every way they can think of to want more of it. And by bumping up the demand and cutting back on the supply, they manipulate the markets. So they don't work the way they're supposed to in the idealized uh, textbook. The second reason not to do this is it takes time. Even if you don't have market manipulation, it takes time to dig a well, to get oil, to put it on a tanker, to ship it. This is taking many, many months during which the prices are crazy, the inflation is crazy. So it's not a solution that works in a timely way. So what socialists would do is to democratize 
the distribution process. In other words, to decide that it's a collective decision. Who gets whatever is scarce? For example, and I'm going to use an example from American history that I've used before, but it does the job. In the early 1940s, we had sudden shortages of consumer goods. No mystery. Production was shifting to fight the World War II. Roosevelt did that. He knew that with resources shifted to produce for war, fewer resources to produce for the consumer, there'd be a shortage. And he knew if he left it to the market, the prices of everything would shoot up, just like they are with oil and gas in Europe and the world now. He didn't want that because to fight a war, you don't want bitter people, who some of whom can't get the milk for their kids. And that you need unity of your people to fight a war. You also need to be fair, even if there isn't a war. So here's what Roosevelt did, which a socialist solution could also do, one form or another. Roosevelt said, you don't use money to buy coffee or meat or sugar or milk or a whole lot of other things, a gallon of gas for your car. You need a ration ticket. The government is going to print little booklets that have little stamp-like ration tickets in them. You tear them off. You go to the store. You can buy a quart of milk if you have a ration ticket. If the store owner sells anyone milk without a ration ticket, They've co committed a crime, they'll be arrested, they'll go to jail. And how did they distribute tickets? Some of you will smile. According to need, the government distributed the tickets. If you had a large family, you got more milk. If you had no uh, family at all, you got less milk. In other words, a rational, democratically arrived at decision about how to distribute scarcity was made. And that was kept separate from the decision of how to repair the discrepancy, how to build up more supply so the issue wouldn't arise. That's a socialist solution. If conversations like this belong in the public domain, as we think they do, that's why we make these videos. And if you share the thought that that would be a valuable contribution, please help us, share with us, be a partner, show this video to friends, neighbors, co-workers, that extends our reach, and that's what we're here to achieve. You know, we are getting quite close to having 300,000 YouTube subscribers following what we do, partnering with us. If you haven't done so, please go to YouTube, find our channel, Democracy at Work, sign up, subscribe. Doesn't cost a nickel, but it extends the reach uh, that we can achieve. And of course, if financially you can help us, that too will be an enormously appreciated partnership. Thank you.